Many a times we read, listen or even we say, you are my heartbeat. But no, my dear romantic friend, you is not the heartbeat. It is love and dub which are our heartbeat. So in this video, we will talk about the heart sounds, mainly love dub, which is S1 and S2. And also there are S3 and S4. So different type of heart sounds, why they are produced, how they are produced and in which condition they are different. I mean the splitting and all those things which are important while you're examining the patient and also important for your MCQ examination. So listen to this video till then. Till that time, I'll introduce myself. I'm Dr. Chirag Madan, working as an intensivist, ICU consultant and in charge at Apollo Hospital, New Delhi. So without wasting much time, let's begin. Before diving into the heart sounds, I'll discuss just briefly about the anatomy and physiology. As you all know, our heart has four chambers, right atria, right ventricle, left atria and left ventricle. And in between the right atria, right ventricle, there is tricuspid valve, whereas on the left side, there is mitral valve between left atria and left ventricle. Whereas if we talk about between the right ventricle and pulmonary artery, there is pulmonary valve or pulmonic valve. Whereas if we talk about the left side between left ventricle and aorta, we have aortic valve. So these all four valves, they prevent backflow of the blood. The tricuspid and uh, mitral valve, they prevent backflow into the atria. Whereas the pulmonary and aortic valve, they prevent backflow of blood into the ventricles. Right? So now, we, whenever you are going to auscultate the heart sound, always try to palpate the carotid artery as well, so as to know in which part of the cardiac cycle these heart sounds are being generated. The upstroke of carotid artery corresponds to the ventricular systole. The auscultation of heart or the heart sounds is done at five places. First, at the which is called as aortic area, which is just right to the sternum in the second intercostal space. Second is the pulmonary area, which is left to the sternal area in the second intercostal space. Third is called as herbs point, which is best to hear the S1 and S2 left to the sternum at third intercostal space and then fourth is tricuspid area which is also left to the sternal area and and the fourth intercostal space and the fifth is the at the apex for the mitral, mitral area right so these are the five places where you auscultate for the heart sounds now, now coming on to the first heart sound which is lub of lub dub, right? And this is commonly called as S1. This first heart sound is produced by the closure of tricuspid and the mitral valve. The closure of tricuspid is called as T1, whereas closure of mitral valve is called as M1. And M1 is usually louder than the T1 because of uh, the higher pressure on the left side of the heart. Now let's listen how the first heart sound is heard. First heart sound corresponds to the end of diastole or beginning of ventricular systole and precedes upstroke of carotid pulsation. So now this first heart sound can be loud in some conditions which are early stages of mitral stenosis, second in increased force of contraction like in tachycardia or hyperdynamic situation as in fever, anemia, thyrotoxicosis, exercise and third is important short PR interval. This is important. Why? Because this is first of all given in Harrison just they have written short PR in loudest one and secondly this has been asked in uh, main previous MCQ examinations. So I'll explain to you why this happens. Uh, short, because of the short PR interval, atria has very less time to expel the contents into the ventricles. So this causes 
forceful contraction of the atria which causes se maximum separation of the valves and upon valvular closure there is a loud sound so that is the reason short pr is related to loud s1 now coming on to the decreased s1 sound or diminished s1 sound it occurs in increased calcification of the valves mainly the calcified ms or calcified ts then uh, in cases of prolonged pr interval then third in cases of mr or tr i mean mitral regurgitation tricuspid regurgitation then decreased force of contraction as in myocardial infarction and fifth in cases the distance is increased between the heart and the skin so uh, as in condition obesity emphysema pericardial effusion or pleural effusion now as we discuss this first heart sound has m1 and t1 so m1 is occurs slightly early than the t1 now these sounds could split also now this splitting can occurs if t1 is delayed or m1 comes early so t1 is delayed in right bundle branch block rbb or in cases of asg and whereas if we talk about m1 it occurs early in cases of lv pacing now talking about reverse splitting of s1 in which m1 comes later or t1 comes early now talking about m1 in cases of lbb it is delayed left bundle branch block or in cases of severe ms or there is left atrial myxoma so all in all these cases the m1 is delayed whereas if you talk about the t1 it comes early in cases of rv pacing right ventricular pacing so these are the condition in which you can see or hear in fact you can hear splitting of s1 talking about the next second heart sound the second heart sound s2 is produced because of the closure of aortic or pulmonary valve closure of aortic is termed as a2 whereas closure of pulmonary valve is called as p2 and this is how it is heard a2 is normally more louder than the p2 because of high pressure on the left side of the heart now this a2 can have high intensity in cases of increased systemic high uh, blood pressure or you can say systemic hypertension or in cases of coarctation of aorta or in cases of aortic aneurysm or in sometimes in thin individuals and the intensity of a2 is decreased in conditions of ar that is aortic regurgitation or calcification of the valves the aortic valves or in cases of decreased systemic blood pressure now the p2 the intensity of p2 is increased in pulmonary hypertension and it is decreased in pulmonary stenosis second heart sound is physiologically split in 90% of the individuals i'll tell you what is the splitting the physiological splitting during inspiration there is increased venous return from all over the body to the right side of the heart which causes delay in closure of pulmonary valves right so p2 is delayed and also decreased return to the left side causes early closure of the a2 or the aortic valve so there is a splitting between a2 and p2 right so this is called as physiological splitting during inspiration and this is how the splitting of s2 is heard now there is another term called as paradoxical splitting of s2 which occurs that means there is splitting in the expiration phase which occurs in either aortic stenosis or hocm that is hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy or in cases of lbb left bundle branch block or you can say in cases of rv pacing right so in these kind of condition there is paradoxical splitting of s2 now there are some condition in which there occurs wide variable splitting of s2 as the name says the splitting is wide 
so either a2 is quite early or p2 is quite delayed so let's talk first about p2 p2 is delayed in conditions like rbb or uh, pulmonary stenosis or pulmonary hypertension severe pulmonary hypertension or if we talk about early a2 it could be because of pacing left ventricle pacing or because of vsd with left to right shunt because the majority of blood is shifted or transferred to the, to the right ventricle in cases of vsd with left to right shunt or in cases of mr so these are the condition in which the splitting is wide and variable and the respiratory variability is preserved now coming on to the other condition in which there is wide and fixed splitting of s2 this occurs in asd that is atrial septal defect so this is very important for your mcq has been asked many 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 a times now in fixed wide and fixed splitting the respiratory variability is lost and why it happens in asd i'll tell you the reason uh, during inspiration there is return of blood from the svc and ivc to the right side of the heart so 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 the closure of the pulmonary valve is delayed the p2 is delayed and during expiration there is greater flow from the left to the right atrium through the shunt which causes again more collection in the right ventricle and delayed closure of the pulmonary valve so the volume the rv volume remains constant in the inspiration and expiration so the respiratory variability is lost so that is the reason it is called as fixed wide there is wide and it is fixed because the right ventricular volume or the delay of p2 remains the same so that is the reason i hope you have understood the concept why it is wide and fixed in asd and this is how it is heard now coming on to the third heart sound which is s3 this occurs after s2 when mitral valve opens and causes rapid filling of the left ventricle so this is a sound produced when there is rapid gush of blood into the compliant left ventricle and this is how third heart sound is heard S3 can be normal finding in pregnant patients in uh, children's in athletes and could be also abnormal whereas S4 that is the fourth heart sound is always ab abnormal or pathological now this S3 can be a sign of systolic heart failure in which LV is overly compliant and uh, there is a dilated left ventricle you should be able to differentiate between a s3 and a split s2 this is very important now s3 first of all is a low pitch whereas split s2 is high pitch secondly to hear the s3 you need to have you need to use the bell of a stethoscope the bell this one is the bell and this is the diaphragm so split s2 with a diaphragm and s3 with a bell and also where to auscultate s3 is best heard at the apex area whereas split s2 best at pulmonic area and s3 is best heard in left decubitus position so this is how you differentiate s3 from split s2 let's hear the third heart sound and split s2 sounds again so this is third heart sound and this one is split s2 now talking about the fourth heart sound s4 which comes before s1 and is usually present in non compliant left ventricle and it occurs when atria contract to force blood into the ventricle through a non compliant into a non compliant left ventricle and this is how fourth heart sound is heard
and S4 is always always pathological, very very rarely normal. Whereas S3 could be normal in some condition as we discussed. Now this S4, uh, as we are saying in non-compliant, so in cases of diastolic heart failure or in cases of active ischemia or in cases of ventricle left ventricle hypertrophy. So in these kind of cases, you can hear the fourth heart sound because atria are contracting with a force and pumping the blood into the non-compliant ventricle, left ventricle, right? So this is all about the heart sounds, S1, S2, S3 and S4. I'll discuss more about the other heart sounds like opening snap, ejection click and the heart murmurs in my next video. I hope you have understood this topic. If yes, click the like button and share with your friends and colleague. And as I always say, do not forget to subscribe this channel for the updates, for the latest updates of my videos. Bye bye guys. Take care.